Namaste. Well, I got a great question from a viewer today. If you could do anything you wanted, how would you change the world? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't think that the world is any of my business really to change. You know, I'm okay with the world being as it is uh, because I am not of this world. I'm from Brahman. Huh? I'm just visiting here. So I don't really have much interest in changing the world. But if you want some advice, I'm very happy to give you my conception or my preferences or my taste huh, of how I would change the world, or actually how I would advise you to change the world. Now, before I begin, a little disclaimer. I'm not advocating revolution or activism or rebellion or that anybody attack anybody else or anything like that. This is simply how I would do and what I would do to make the world a better place if I had the power or if I knew someone who had the power and would take my advice. Okay, this is not a plan, not an action plan, not a commitment to anything except an idea, an opinion. And it's just my opinion. It's not anybody else's opinion. And I take full responsibility for having my opinions. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Nothing beyond that. I mean, my plan for the rest of my life is to live quietly um, away from most people and uh, just sort of fade away. So with that in mind, what would I do to change the world and how would I change it? Well, first of all, I would begin with education. Education, I mean, really, the, the whole society, human society now is broken because of wrong education, specifically materialism, scientific atheism, and like that. So I would immediately scrap the existing educational system and institute a new system, or actually a very old system, based on the four by four consciousness matrix, which you've probably seen a bunch of times on this channel, and the seven by seven chakra energy matrix, which is not so well known, but it's been around on this channel for years now. And actually, our whole philosophy, our whole practice, everything is compressed in these two diagrams. So I would base the whole educational system on this, which is basically Shankaracharya's Advaita philosophy. And I would make, for example, the status of a person in society instead of being based on money and political power and whatnot, to base it on their understanding of consciousness, their demonstrated ability to realize, understand, and control their own consciousness. So this is the kind of world that I would want to live in, where everybody, the way everybody now knows their uh, addition and multiplication tables, I would also have them know these four states of consciousness, their symptoms, and so on and so on, everything about it. And I would make granting positions and power and status in society dependent on that. Because what we need is not more leaders, we need better leaders, leaders who understand what a human being is, consciousness. So. The consciousness is the most important thing, that the whole society should be based on consciousness. Then there would be an educational uh, program on the media 
for people who are already out of school. And it would be based on exactly the same curriculum, but instead of like a, a school or a course, uh, it would be maybe online courses, or maybe it would be uh, many, many forms of entertainment, like movies, music, comedy sketches, uh, and so on. Uh, dramas, what have you, every type of, of uh, movie, every type of public presentation based on consciousness and just phase out all the other stuff. Phase it out, get rid of it. Huh? Censorship? Oh, yes, definitely, because these false philosophies are ruining people's lives. It's poison mental poison. So just like we don't allow physical or biological poisons in food, we should not allow philosophical or conceptual poisons in our educational system or in our society or in our media. Everything should be based on consciousness, the chakras, and the energy. And I could go into great detail on this, but I'm not going to because I don't want to make this video too long. And, I mean, you could even have uh, media encouraging non-reproductive sex and giving sex education, ex education in Tantra specifically, not just ordinary material sex, but how to attain higher states of consciousness and energy through Tantra. And, you know, this is part of the 7x7 seven seven matrix philosophy. And then also uh, that this Tantra education would be required before you're given a license to either get married or have a child. Because the equality of the child is based on the quality of the sex that produces it. And there is in Vedic culture something called Garbhadhan Samskara, the seed giving ceremony, to uh, reproduce in a conscious way and bring in high quality living entities, and also how to raise them and so on and so forth. All this should be a requirement for getting married and having children. And finally, all these media presentations could be done by computer using deep fakes. Uh, there's no need, even you could have the most popular celebrities doing these media uh, simply by a computer representation, uh, AI driven representation, using their voice and likeness. That would help spread this message uh, more virally among society. So yeah, these are radical, I know. <laughs> Then what? How? How would we institute this new social and educational system, this new media and the new culture based on it? Well, there'd have to be a world government. I mean, the whole system of nation states and competition between nation states is broken. It's based on a false philosophy. materialistic dualism. So since the philosophy is flawed, everything based on it is also flawed. It's very simple. So what would a, a government look like that was based on consciousness? Well, it would be a world government. There wouldn't be any nation states. Nation states are abstractions. They're simply paper tigers made of words. And people are hypnotized into believing this and acting as if these things are real. It's honestly it's the most weird thing you could ever see in your life. Grown up people acting as if these fairy tale stories are real. And then in en masse, huge numbers of people going along with it as if it's normal. It's not normal, it's nuts. There's no way you can draw a line on a map and say, now this is a country and you have to be willing to die 
for the country if your body is born within these lines on the map. There's something really deeply wrong with that. So that has to go. We need a world government. Uh, we need to, you know, eliminate things like money and competition and capitalism. We need to eliminate animal slaughter, fossil fuels that are ruining the environment. We need to eliminate wasteful, pointless things like manned space exploration. And, you know, just use robots if we really want to know what's going out, on out there. Uh, and we need, instead of manufacturing and industry, we need strong nanotechnology guided by strong AI. Now, the AI seems to be coming along, but the nanotechnology has gone dark, I think because it has so many military applications. Uh, the cutting edge of nanotechnology is not happening out in the public. Uh, Eric Drexler, uh, who I know, by the way, uh, mapped this out decades ago. And uh, as soon as he established the theoretical foundation, the whole field just went dark. So any advancement in that field is now being done in secret. And we won't know until something happens <laughs> that'll change our world. Uh, but we do know that AI is advancing very quickly. And soon it'll be possible to have like a master AI system that could have a global presence through human-like avatars in virtual reality and actually, you know, talk to you and stuff like that and run the world because an AI will be fair. It'll allocate resources properly. It'll engage people properly according to their talents and skills without this false competition that capitalism engenders, or actually any system which is based on money. Money is only good for moving large amounts of value from one place to another. And now we have computer networks. So even if we do need money for certain applications, it can all be online. And the average person needs never to even think about money. That's really the kind of society that we need to grow to our full potential. And then more than that, you're going to ask, well, how do we get from here to there? And obviously, a revolution is going to be necessary. A revolution that sweeps away the current structures, the current society, the current governments, the current economies and replaces them with something much, much better. And I think it's going to come out of climate change. People are going to reach a point where they are so desperate, they're willing to do literally anything to combat climate change, including get rid of the leaders who have done basically nothing. I mean, we've known about climate change since the 1950s. And I mean, in uh, the 1960s, there was even testimony about climate change in, in Congress. And of course, we know that the oil companies had done research and knew that their products were going to cause global warming back in the 1950s. So, you know, why haven't we done anything about it? Money. So this is one thing that's going to have to go. Now, how do we get the whole world population to rise up and have a revolution against the corrupt, phony, materialistic, unqualified leaders and governments and so on? Well, I think, see, you know, I've been around for a while. I've been places, I know people, I know people who know people, you know? And uh, here's where it gets really woo-woo, okay? So put on your tinfoil hats, fasten your seatbelts. Here we go. 
Back in about the late 1970s, I met a guy, Bill Casing, who wrote the book, We Never Went to the Moon. He was the guy who parsed all those photographs and found all the problems with lighting and stuff. And concluded that it was staged. And actually, I lived just a couple of blocks away from him, and we had friends in common and so on, and I spent a lot of time with him. And way, way back then, 50 years ago, there were persistent rumors of, re of reverse engineering of crashed UFOs. You know, this the current uh, mainstream news flurry about UFOs or UAPs or whatever you want to call them is uh, just the latest wave in the UFO story. But the rumor was then, and still is now today, <clears throat> that since about 1947, the U.S. at least, and probably other countries as well, have had covert reverse engineering programs trying to understand the alien technology in uh, probes and other craft that have crashed or been shot down in their territories. So uh, this is a persistent rumor. You know, it doesn't go away no matter how much time seems to elapse without confirmation. Well, I don't think we're ever going to get confirmation. And I'll tell you why. Along with this rumor, there's another rumor which comes from a much deeper, darker level of the uh, international elite, or whatever you want to call it, uh, that the best way to create a world government is to have a flying saucer scare to have an alien invasion. And Arthur C. Clarke already wrote the screenplay for this. It's called Childhood's End. And it's about these aliens that come and they completely take over the human race. They demand world government. They demand so many changes and so on. And they uh, basically unify the people of Earth and create a world government and so on and like that. Really, that's probably the only way it could happen. And, you know, they were telling to reduce the population, reduce the industry and reduce resource usage and stuff like that. All very sane policies. And these aliens were human-like enough not to be weird, but they were weird enough to be definitely aliens, right? So um, this is a great story, and I think it's something that there are some deep black teams working on, and the whole thing could be done if the reverse engineering program was successful enough to get, you know, a few hundred viable spacecrafts or at least atmospheric vehicles going and uh, to, you know, make them act in concert to simulate uh, alien invasion. Uh, there are all kinds of reasons why an actual alien invasion is extremely unlikely. And the main reason is the colossal distances, I mean literally astronomical distances, between one star system and another. No matter what kind of propulsion you have, it's still going to take a long, long time. So what possible motive could there be? Making an empire? I mean, why? Trade or exploitation of resources? Same argument. It's uneconomical to move stuff from one planet to another. Huh? It just, it could never work. The whole galactic empire trope is really science fiction. 
<laughs> bad science fiction because there's no way that it could be made economically feasible or what to speak of even, you know, physically possible. But anyway, a fake alien invasion would be just the thing to move the people, you know, that combined with a desperate climate situation would be enough, I think, to get everybody's ass out of the seat, you know, in front of the internet or the TV and, and get them to actually do something to change the world. And I think there's teams already working on this. This is another persistent rumor since, whoa, way back in the 1950s. From what I've heard from, you know, certain people familiar with the subject matter, as they say in the news articles. So these aliens would not have to be real. They could be AI. They could be just projections. They could be, you know, uh, they could be like uh, operate these telepresence robots that just, you know, like roll around everywhere, you see. And if you really want to get your tinfoil hat on, the kind with the propeller on the top, you know. <laughs> That's why the federal government has mandated wheelchair ramps at all public buildings so that the aliens' telepresence robots can roll up right into the Congress and speak to the government. <laughs> Darn, went over the line again. Well, anyway, if this all works out, people will revolt against the nation states They'll revolt against the banks. They'll revolt against the capitalists and the oligarchs of, of every stripe. Huh? And, you know, kick the bastards out and allow the aliens to institute a world government run by a supercomputer. I mean, it just seems kind of obvious plot. And the technology is there now. So I think, let me make a prediction that the current investigation, public investigation into UFOs will reveal that there have been extraterrestrial visitors, but the reverse engineering program will just kind of get covered up and evaporate and, and go away. And the reason I say this is that they don't want the public to think that these could be made, these crafts could be made by human beings. Maybe they'll create a cover story like, well, we tried to, to reverse engineer it, but it didn't really work. And we got a few gadgets. See, here's one, here's another little gadget. Beep, beep, you know, boink, boink, whatever. And, uh, but they're basically toys. And uh, that's as far as we were able to get because their technology is just too advanced. Well, that's a nice cover story, huh? Anyway, um, if this can happen, you know, the world could be rid of nation states and nuclear weapons and uh, uh, exploitative rich people and corporations and uh, money and all this garbage this conceptual dead weight that holds us back from real human civilization based on consciousness. So this all would require to reduce the population to a sustainable level. I think in the Georgia Guidestones, it's said that the world population should stabilize somewhere around 500 million, half a billion. That's like one sixteenth of the people alive today. This is going to happen anyway because of climate change and because of the uh, destruction of the society based on its effects. Civilizational collapse of the uh, industrial materialistic civilization is absolutely going to happen. 
and it's going to happen in this century. Nobody can tell you the timing, but it's already happening. Just look at the news. huh? So we'll have to reduce the population. That means we should strongly discourage childbearing and reproduction. And like I said, educate people and promote non-reproductive sex of every description. You know, this is a natural thing to do. When a population of any species reaches its resource limits, there is naturally in nature a spontaneous increase of homosexuality and other non-reproductive sexual behaviors. This is also happening in human society. And to get in the way of that and insist on keeping to increase the population is simply madness. It's so destructive. It's, it's terrible. That needs to change. And we also need to get rid of the nuclear family concept and instead encourage cooperative living based on interests and activities. You know, pilots should live together. Musicians should live together. Meditators should live together. You know, like that. And test people, like I said, based on their realization of consciousness and see, you know, who deserves to be a leader and, you know, who can really lead by example in showing compassion, open-mindedness, a willingness to understand things in a new way, which is based on the way things really are in nature, because Brahman really is the self in all living creatures. And consciousness really is the basis of everything, even the whole material world. And if we don't change our ways, then whatever you want to call it, nature's law, the will of God, or what have you, this wrong-headed society is going to be destroyed. And like one of the fundamental rules of power is never waste a good crisis. <laughs> So we've got the mother of all crises in climate change. And there's no reason to waste it when we could utilize it to actually change this whole world into a paradise. And so that's what I would do if I had the power to change the world. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.